On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. It's nothing that you can do to stop a competitive edge. It's just in the water. Talk to us a little bit about, like I said, so a, a successful, obviously, rookie season, the run you guys had, the playoff run you have. Take a step back that second year. There's, they hear there's chemistry issues. They hear Kyrie's a problem. They hear there's no ball moving. You hear all, a bunch of things. What was the difference between that second-year team and the third-year team now where you're flourishing as an all-star? The chemistry seems to be back on track. Um, what changed, you know, outside of changing, you know, Kyrie, Kyrie and Kemba, who are similar players to a sense, you know, from the outside looking in. But what has been the big difference and why are you guys back to the chemistry we saw as fans your, your rookie year? Uh, I think it was a lot of things that I think played a part in that my, my second year. Like you said, we had that group, that young group, you know, we, we, we almost get, we like a couple stops away from getting to the championship. So it's like we we had a big summer, you know, guys are we feeling ourselves, we excited, we we ready to take that next jump. I think, you know, I'm I'm ready to be an all-star my second year. But now we got Gordon and Kai coming back. And like we we everybody like we all had good guys. Like everybody got along. You know, we we like being around each other, but I think it was just like everybody had kind of like personal goals, which is not wrong. Um, you know, we we all were a fault to some degree, you know. I didn't play great. JB, you know, nobody played as good as they wanted. And then we weren't winning. So that had, like, that affected us as well. I remember the first 20 games, we was 10 and 10. And everybody thought we was going to have the best record in the, in the league. And, like, we, we just weren't consistent. We would have, like, a, a stretch where we, like, we would win five or six in a row. But then we would go one and, one and six. And I think we just, it just, we just couldn't figure it out. And, you know, coming in this third year, we, we, we lost, like, six or seven guys. And basically the message coming in this season was like last year, like, let's just forget about it. Like last year happened. Mm -hmm. um, we can learn a lot from it individually and as a team, but like, let's just forget about it. We can't change what happened. So let's just focus on this year and try not to make the same mistakes we did last season. And I think we've been doing a pretty good job of that uh, so far. Absolutely. I mean, I've really felt you guys were coming on strong, especially chemistry-wise. Jack and I both know being able to be on championship teams, chemistry is, 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 is king. And you really feel, see and feel like you guys are having fun out there. You and JB are going back and forth doing your thing. Kai does this, or excuse me, Kimba's doing his thing. Gordon's getting his footing back under him. You guys are playing really well. You know, you are, to me, you guys are not necessarily the, the surprise team of the East because we know how good and talented you guys were, but just coming off that second season, we're just like, well, what team are we going to get? You know what I mean? So you guys are proven in that second half of the season, man, that you guys were definitely a team to be reckoned with. And I was looking forward to this playoff run. What are your thoughts and, and how optimistic are you about us, or excuse me, you guys returning to the court this season? To be honest, man, I don't, I don't know. It's like one week you hear one thing and then the next week you hear something else. So I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I, th I feel like it may be tough to come back. Um, you know, so many obstacles and variables that you got to put in place and work things out. And, you know, and I hear like playing, uh, playing without fans. Like, I don't, I don't, I know a lot of people probably don't, you know, don't want to do that um, because I, I just think that's, you, you lose a lot of the passion for the game. And like, that's kind of who we play for. We play for the fans. We play the for the energy. excitement of the game, yep. the energy. The energy, We yeah. feed off of that. So... I mean, I mean, they got people that's going to try to figure it out in one way or another. Uh, but to be honest, man, at this point, I don't know what's going to happen. You and Kyrie got a good, uh, got a good Duke connection. You know, uh, y'all been, been brothers. What was it like playing with him in Boston and uh, now, now with him being in Brooklyn? Uh, yeah, that's, that's like my big brother. Um, obviously, the Duke connection. And I, I joke with him all the time. He only played nine games at Duke. So I'd be like, bro, you really didn't, <laughs> you really didn't go to Duke. Right. <laughs> Right. What you play, but, shit? You only what you only play. You only play what? Twenty five? Y'all both was in and out that motherfucker yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no playing with. Uh, you know, we had the at the same time we had the same agent, and then you know playing two years with him. Um, you know, it like especially my first year. Like I don't people I don't care. Like people might think he crazy, but Kai got he got game. Like 
Oh, he one of God. the he one of the most skilled <laughs> basketball players like no ever. question, no and question. Like me, me getting to see it, my, especially my first year. It's it's a difference being on the court with him and seeing it, and every day, every game, and in practice, like just some of the things he did with the ball was just like mind boggling to me, and the way he was able to finish, mm -hmm. like he he like he's special, uh, and he he's, he's one of the he one of the best players I've got to, ever, was able to see and in person and play with, and you know his decision to go to Brooklyn, obviously, I mean a lot of people was mad and things like that, but. You know, us as basketball players, we understand, like, once you get to a certain level and a certain point in your career, like, you've earned the right to make the decision on, on what makes you happy and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't, I mean, I was, I was happy for him. You know, if that's, he wanted to go back home and be closer to his family and play, you know, something he dreamed about. I think everybody should have that opportunity because, you know, you, know, you can get traded in the blink of an eye and, and, you know, nobody get mad at right. the, the organization. Mm -hmm. But, you know, everybody point the finger when, somebody wants to go do what makes them happy. Facts. Right. Absolutely. It's the, it's the business when you're traded, cut, waved, but you're a bad guy when you take your happiness and freedom into your own hands. It's a cold game. There's something about how this place forms a different kind of person. On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. You mentioned Prince George's County. People know what it's about. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. Being from this area, you have to have tough skin. The gym became his sanctuary. PG County guy. Buckets for America. Prince George packs a lot of power, a lot of character. It's nothing that you can do to stop that competitive edge. We're pushing the community and the culture forward. There's just in the water. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Buckle up. Get Showtime free at Showtime.com.